Uh, hi friends, uh, my name is Sarah Simpson. I'm a mixed media artist. I'm someone who loves to draw and create. And you know what? Even though it's been uh, it's the new year, it's uh, the beginning of February now, and um, I haven't been feeling all that creative. I know this is the beginning of the year. This is the year where we like or the time of the year where we like to kind of set our intentions uh, for the new year and uh, start new projects. But um, yeah, I've been feeling what you might call um, artist block. Um, so what is artist block? Um, basically, it's when your muse has fluttered away, it has evaporated into the breeze, uh, your magic is gone. No, actually, um, that's silly. I think we all kind of know that's silly. But on a subconscious level, I think um, a lot of us feel like um, that sense of kind of like uh, creativity is like this magical thing that can evaporate and just like be gone one day. And I don't think that's what it is. And I don't think that artist block is the right term for this feeling that we have. I actually think we should um, start a movement to call it artist fatigue. Because what I think it really is, is just feeling tired. I think you're just tired. I think I'm just tired. And I've been thinking, um, you know what? It's okay to give yourself a break. It's okay to be tired. It doesn't matter what time of year it is. It doesn't matter if it's January, February, if it's the middle of the year. You can start your goals and work on your goals any time of year. So um, my first tip that I've been thinking about in regards to artist block is, first of all, it's artist fatigue and it's okay to be tired. So why would one be tired? Well, um, for myself, uh, in particular, I worked pretty hard from, um, September through November this year. I, I did Inktober challenge. Um, I launched a little Christmas shop this year. This was my first time I built a website and, um, so maybe it makes sense that I'm a little tired right now. So you might ask yourself, are you coming off of a, a pretty uh, productive period? So maybe it makes sense that you're a little bit tired. Um, you know, and it, I think it's unrealistic to think that we can be um, creative, our most creative, our most original 365 days a year. Um, it's unrealistic to think that every drawing is going to be um, a, a Mona Lisa or whatever, a masterpiece, whatever your, uh, your, whatever your idea of a masterpiece is. But, um, yeah, so that, that brings me to, uh, my next thought, which is, um, do you have creative seasons and, um, uh, maybe you should embrace your creative seasons. Um, so for example, for myself, um, I noticed that um, I tend to always be burnt out in January, <laughs> the last couple of years. And I also tend to be very productive um, from like September through November. Um, that fall time, I just love getting started on projects. I think it kind of um, reminds me of going back to school. Um, it, maybe it's like this um, pattern that started back then. So maybe you have your own creative seasons or maybe uh, you just you tired after coming off of a, a creative project. So um, my second tip is to embrace your creative seasons, whatever they are. So um, building on the idea of creative seasons, um, I think you can divide your creative seasons into um, periods of creative input and periods of creative output. And um, 
more simply, I think of periods of creative input as being periods of time where you're, you're focused on improving your craft, um, and periods of creative output as being periods of time more where you're you're taking your skills, um, the crafts that you've learned, and you're applying it to your own stories and your own storytelling. Um, I know for myself, I aspire to create um, children's book art or storytelling art. I'm really interested interested in um, like magical and whimsical type of themes. So I'm always um, striving to create um, new and original ideas. Um, So I think I have a hard time sometimes getting back into periods of creative input because I put a lot of pressure on myself to always be um, in a mode of creative output. And, um, I don't think it's realistic, at least for me, um, and maybe probably for most of us to always, uh, to think that every time we sit down in front of our sketchbook or, um, wherever you draw, that it's going to turn into a masterpiece. Um, perhaps it's not realistic to think that, um, you're always going to be in a mode of creative output, um, 365 days a year. Um, it's actually not healthy. So, um, I do really encourage, um, focusing on these periods of creative input. And, um, I think creative input can be a lot of different things. Um, that can be like going back to basics, doing studies, Um, It can mean um, taking a look at your work and really taking time to focus on things that you can improve on. Um, It can mean taking a step back a little bit, uh, making time for other hobbies like reading and um, I like to do embroidery, catching up on movies. Um, I actually think it's really important to have experiences and do things outside of art because all of those things you can bring into your art, um, whether on a subconscious level or, um, on a much more, uh, visceral level. I don't know if that's the right word, but hopefully you know what I mean. Um, so think of periods of time when you, uh, aren't feeling those creative ideas flowing as an opportunity just to focus more on um, honing in your craft and um, bringing in other experiences, allowing yourself maybe to step back from your work a little bit. I think that's all really important. Okay, so a lot of these tips have been uh, centered around kind of our mindset and how to approach our art when we're in these periods of um, artistic fatigue. Um, So here's a more practical tip for you. Um, So whenever I'm in these periods of artistic fatigue, I find myself being really indecisive. I have a hard time settling on anything to draw. Um, You know, I can scroll and scroll through Pinterest and just nothing um, will speak to me. So something I do to combat this idea um, or um, this feeling of artistic fatigue is to um, pick a theme. And um, I actually think... and. Pick a theme and pick a period of time. So I usually do a week. So for example, for this drawing here, um, my theme for this week was plants. So I did studies of other artists' work that um, were very uh, landscape-based or like background art for animation. And um, then I did some studies of plants from photographs. And then I kind of ended this week by... um, Basically, this was kind of like this cool still life I found, and then I added um, myself and my dog and my cat into it just to personalize it a little bit. So um, I think it's just really helpful to pick a theme because a lot of times the hardest part is getting started. Um, So pick a theme, do it for a week. If you like it, if you find that you're enjoying the theme that you chose, then keep going with it. 
Um, I think the lesson that you can take from that is that um, it wasn't necessarily the ideas. It was uh, indecisiveness that was preventing you from um, making more art. Um, And if you don't like the theme, then pick another theme and, um, you know, try it for a week and see how you feel about it. See if it gets any um, creativity flowing for you. So those are my uh, tips for getting over artist block. I hope these are helpful for you. As a quick little recap, um, so let's remember that first of all, um, it's not artist block, it's artist fatigue, and it's okay to be tired. Um, The second thing is to remember is that we all have our own creative seasons, our own ebbs and flows when we feel most creative and when we feel less creative. And um, so let's embrace that and work with it. And remember that um, when we're not feeling our most creative, we can focus on our creative input. Um, We can step away, we can um, embrace other hobbies, we can take classes, we can get into a mode of observation and discovery and focus less on our creative output. Um, And um, if all else fails, just pick a theme and um, play with it. Sometimes the most creativity comes from constraints and the hardest part is getting started. Um, I hope these tips are helpful for you. Um, These are the things that I come back to that have been helpful for me. If you're still watching this video at this point, hopefully that means you've enjoyed it so far. And if so, maybe consider uh, liking this video and also possibly subscribing. I would find that very encouraging. This is actually my first video, Um, but I hope to make many more. Uh, There's lots of topics um, I'd like to talk about. Um, And we've got just a little bit left on this video, so I'm just going to let it play out here with some sweet, sweet tunes. Uh, Until next time, keep on artin' in the real world. Bye.